doing some molar uprighting is a complicated orthodontic movement because you can see from the occlusal relation here when a first molar has been lost so this molar has been lost right here the first molar we have been probably extracted quite a while ago that has allowed the allowed the smaller here to tip into the edentular space but also the upper molar has over erupted the second molar has kind of over erupted also and you have a buccal root buccal crown torque of the seven right here so it means that it's the occlusion is much more complicated than it appears. So if you want to upright this tooth by pushing it distally like so and avoid too much extrusion, the mechanical system is pretty complicated. Let's see what the desired movement will be. So the desired movement is I want this tooth to ex basically the first molar is intruding, the second molar is torquing, the second lower molar is actually uprighting and rotating without too much extrusion. You notice that we also have definitely left the occlusion as identical as possible without opening the bite. And that's a very important aspect of what we do. So how can we do that? In the first part of this discussion, we look at the straight wire system and I will assume that we have been able to intrude upper molars and correct the occlusal plane because that's another lecture. So we'll concentrate on the only on the lower arch at the moment and we will just draw a few findings. And we again you can see that that's the movement we want. So if we use a straight wire system, the best thing you need to do is to draw a why what brackets the loo for the bracket so we have a bracket here and I can do better than that so escape that so I have a bracket here and you notice that as soon as I draw brackets the occlusion becomes more complicated so let's trace a red wire let's assume we have a straight wire system so the red wire comes in and we'll go engage into the bracket and if you look carefully, it appears that this is a good system because you will have definitely a rotation that will be appearing. So this molar will definitely rotate in a counterclockwise. This molar will rotate counterclockwise, which is what we want. And it will give us also, unfortunately, an extrusive force like so. So now molar will move into a different position. It will extrude. And why? Because a wire, if you use a 0 0.018 night eye wire, you will get roughly 200 grams of force to engage this wire into the bracket. So that's a problem. And hopefully um, we want to avoid this 200 grams of force right here as much as possible. So why is the straight wire not as efficient? It's because you will get the effect of rotation, but you'll have extrusion. So you'll have rotation that you want, but you'll have extrusion. Really what we really want in a case like this one is rotation and a little bit of intrusion as possible, but as much as possible, we do not want extrusion. 200 grams of force is a very high force. So this will work. The problem you have is you will place this molar into a significant occlusal trauma and you may end up possibly having some issues with the periodontia. So the straight wire system absolutely does work. The problem is a high force system that places the tooth right here into a significant amount of trauma. And you may have noticed that teeth that you, you upright using this te technique may end up being very mobile or you will end up 
opening the bite. So we'll see in the next video how we can better upright the teeth using a cantilever. And again, this is just an incomplete mechanical system. We're just illustrating what happens to the molar. And again, we will need, if you want to learn more, I would suggest you to suggest to you to read Dr. Burstone and Choi book on biomechanical principles uh, for, for this uh, exact situation. But what I did was a very simplistic concept to show you that the straight wire system is a high force system despite the fact that we use nickel titanium wires. Thank you.